David here with Big Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. It seems like lately I've been featuring a large number of lesser known makers, uh, and that's something I enjoy doing. Uh, making those discoveries of something you've never seen before is one of the most enjoyable things about this hobby, in my opinion. And the pen I have for you today is from a company you are probably not familiar with and has a very unique design. The company is called Mad Science Pen Company, and the pen is called the Beta Type R. What I am going to do today is go over the parts and features of this intriguing pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the Mad Science Pen Company for providing this pen for review. The gentleman behind the brand is Jacob Pulowski. Uh, he is based out of Indiana and began his pen making journey a couple of years ago, as a lot of creators do creating kit pens. Uh, he quickly transitioned to making full bespoke pens. Uh, he watched lots of YouTube videos about pens and pen making and happened to come upon a video I created a while back of Jonathan Brooks and I creating some custom resins. I, you know, I'm really proud of how that video turned out. Um, I have lost track of the number of times I've been at shows and have been approached by a maker citing that video as a significant influence on their pen making journey. Folks come up to Jonathan all the time as well and mention that video as an influence. Uh, it's nice to see that over time it's had a positive impact on the community. Well, after seeing that video, Jacob realized how much the process of pouring blanks looked like mixing things in a lab, which was the inspiration behind the Mad Science Pen Company name. Okay, let's take a look at one of his creations, and here it is. The name of this particular model is the Beta Type R. Uh, while Jacob does create resins for some of his pens, this particular one uses a resin from Cocoon Blanks. Um, I really like this material. It has a very stone-like quality, and it has what Jacob describes as an ultra-matte finish. And I love the contrast between the barrel and then the frosted light blue cap and section. When it comes to pen design, uh, there is a fine line between quirks and flaws. Um, I would describe this pen as having a number of unique quirks, but I wouldn't categorize any of them as flaws. Um, it's like the clip on a Visconti pen. Uh, you know, it's unlike any other clip out there and it takes a bit of getting used to, but that's one of the things that make Visconti pens unique and special. Uh, let's take a look at the parts and features of this particular model. The top of the cap is very slightly rounded, not quite flat. Uh, this is a clipless pen. Uh, some clipless pens I feel could benefit from a roll stop of some kind. Um, I feel this pen is fine without one. Uh, Jacob has mentioned some future design plans to incorporate a, a larger faceted ink window, which would double as a roll stop. We'll see what that design end up looking like, uh, but I personally feel this pen is fine without one. Um, I think the lines look really nice and clean. Uh, the cap angles up. Uh, it is very short, only about an inch long. Uh, there is a very slight step up from the cap to the barrel. Uh, in a perfect world, it might be nice if that was a smoother transition, uh, but it's a very minor nit to pick. This cap does have two black O-rings. Uh, Jacob mentioned that he was transitioning to clear O-rings, which I feel is a good choice. Uh, you could see pictures of some of his latest creations on his website, and those do utilize clear O-rings, which I think provide a, a bit more of a cleaner look. Uh, it then transitions into this portion here, which is actually the section. Um, I really like this frosted blue. It's translucent enough for you to get a bit of a peek as to what's going on inside the pen. It also serves as an ink window because you can get a look at about an inch of the converter. The section angles up and there is a chiseled transition between the section and the barrel. While initially I felt that it would have looked a little bit nicer if it was more of an even, smooth transition, Jacob explained that the more exaggerated, grooved transition helps new owners and prospective buyers kind of better understand how the pen works, since assembly isn't necessarily the same as on most traditional pens, and that logic makes a lot of sense. 
The barrel then tapers down at an even rate of decline, and the end of the barrel, like the top of the cap, is very slightly rounded. Uh, the cap is very unique on this pen. As I mentioned previously, it's very small. It's only about an inch. When you remove the cap, it almost feels like you're uncorking a bottle of wine or something like that. Now, with this cap, I previously mentioned the O-rings. Uh, Jacob recommends that when you uncap this pen, you do so with a bit of a twist rather than a straight pull. Um, this helps alleviate any built-up pressure in the cap. Uh, also, you can see here there is a very small hole in the side of the cap. Uh, this is another way in which any potential pressure uh, is released, having that kind of release valve, if you will, preventing this cap from uh, popping or making noise when you remove it. It's a smart design. Uh, once you have removed the cap, underneath we have a number six stainless steel Yovo nib. Uh, the nib is available in either gold or silver tone, in extra fine, fine, medium, or broad. Uh, at a very nominal additional cost, only like $5, there is flex options as well. You can see here the nib is inset into the section, creating a bit of a hooded look. Now I'll discuss the inking of this pen here in a minute and the challenges this hooded design presents, but I like the overall unique aesthetics. Uh, the section begins with an exaggerated flare before angling up for the rather lengthy front portion of this pen. Uh, this ultra matte material uh, makes for a great gripping surface. And when you combine that with the large flare on the end, your grip isn't going anywhere on this section. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. Uh, the section threads are a bit long. It takes 10 full rotations to separate it from the barrel, which is a little bit much. Um, it arrives with a Twisby branded converter. If you are not familiar with Twisby converters, they have a significantly larger ink capacity than a standard international converter. Uh, they won't work with all pens which utilize a standard international converter, uh, but this pen is designed to be able to use this larger converter as well as a standard size if you should choose to use one of those. Uh, with the lack of metal and solid barrel construction with the appropriate amount of silicone grease, this pen would work well as an eyedropper. Now, the process of inking this pen has a few quirks, as I mentioned up top. Uh, this flared end and hooded nib present a few challenges. Uh, Jacob includes documentation with the pen that recommends you uh, remove the converter and ink it up outside of the pen and then place it back. Um, you can ink it in the more traditional way by dipping the nib, but you need to do so a bit differently. Uh, with this hood, if you simply dip the nib uh, directly into the ink straight up, air will get trapped in that chamber and you won't be able to suck ink up into the converter. However, if you attack it at a bit of an angle, uh, then it will work. Now, a problem with other pens with hooded nibs uh, I've experienced uh, is that when you ink them up by dipping, ink will get trapped in this portion here, and then that causes issues. Uh, in my experience, the area around this nib is large enough that I haven't experienced that issue. For me, uh, I find the excess ink won't get trapped as much and pretty much flows out. Uh, some ink bottles accommodate the angled attack better than others, so whether you ink it up that way or directly with the converter will most likely depend on the bottled ink of your choice. The Mad Science Pen Company's Beta Type R can be found on the company website and retails for a reasonable $175. Now, when dealing with small pen makers, realize uh, Jacob is a small one-man shop. Uh, it could be challenging to keep inventory. If you go to his site right now, he might be completely sold out. He tends to create batches, announce the availability on Instagram, and then makes them available on his site. So if you're interested in potentially picking up one of these unique creations, it would pay to follow him on Instagram to stay abreast of when new batches will be available. Uh, yes, it can be a bit inconvenient that inventory is not available 100% of the time, but sometimes it's the things that you need to work a little bit harder to obtain which turn out to be more cherished possessions. Uh, this pen is unlike anything else in my collection, which is one of the reasons I care for it. Uh, on top of that, as you will see here in the writing sample, it performs nicely as well. Okay, now it is time for some measurements size comparisons, and the aforementioned writing sample.
Here we go with some size comparisons for the Mad Science Pen Company Beta Type R. Um, one thing I wanted to share with you when I was inking it up for this review, I had mentioned in the review that the ink kind of just falls right out of that chamber. You know, it doesn't necessarily fall out, but it's large enough that, uh, you know, the tissue that I'm using, I can kind of get in there and get the ink out. So it doesn't necessarily all fall out. And uh, the cleanest way to fill this pen is going to be directly from the converter. But if you want to do it from here, you can, but you just got to make sure to clean out that uh, extra space. But there's enough space in here that it's uh, easily accessible. But in regard to some size comparisons, uh, here it is with a Platinum 3776, that's the Yamanaka version. Uh, and then here it is with a Montegrappa Elmo, that's the Chrissy Ocola. And here it is with a Sailor Pro Gear, and this is the Imperial Black. And in regard to a couple of other uniquely designed pens, uh, here it is with a Visconti Homo Sapien. Uh, and then here it is with a Lamy Dialogue 3. And then finally, here it is with a Nakaya Dorsal Fin 2. In regard to uncapped comparisons, it's not going to be that much of a difference. But here it is with that Platinum 3776. Uh, and here it is with the uh, Sailor uh, Pro Gear. And then finally, here it is with the Homo Sapien. Something I didn't mention in the review was that this pen is plenty long enough to use unposted, as you can see. Uh, this small cap is not designed to post here on the end. And that's fine, because it's plenty long enough. So here we have the writing sample for the Man Science Pen Company. And this is the beta type R. Uh, and this is a medium stainless steel nib. And the ink I'm using, I wanted to match it to the blue here of this section. Uh, and uh, one of my uh, blues that I really like lately that I've reviewed is Andorillium. Blue Ringed Octopus. This is what the ink looks like. It's a nice vibrant turquoise. In regard to a couple of other turquoises, this is what it looks like with Visconti's turquoise. And here is Omas turquoise, which is a little lighter. Uh, and then here it is with Paniter's turquoise as well. These are what the bottles look like of Andorillium ink. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, they got some really nice colors and some really nice themes. Uh, I have uh, an Avian series that I need to review here in the fairly near future, uh, but the uh, Cephalopod series was very nice. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. This big uh, exaggerated end kind of gives this uh, pen a unique feeling. It's one of those pens that, uh, you know, you know it when you have it in your hand. I, I appreciate that it's unique, and but it's also very comfortable. Your grip is not slipping off this large, uh, uh, this large end. And I kind of like that uh, the end comes down all the way here because then that way, I, sometimes when things are hooded, it uh, makes you sit a little further back than you would like. But I kind of like that I can get right on the end there uh, and I'm in a natural position as I would with any other pen. Um, this is a stainless steel nib. You're not going to get a lot of line variation out of here. You can press a little bit, but it's not too much. The ink flow, I'd say for a medium nib, is rather generous on this particular pen. In regard to reverse writing, it's a little sharp. A little inconsistent, but it could get the job done. And in regard to some fast writing, uh, 
the feed keeps up just fine. So there we have the Mad Science Pen Company Beta Type R. Um, I've grown really fond of this design. I really like this resin as well. I just think that it matches very nicely with this nice turquoise blue. Um, as I mentioned, if you'd like one of these, they might be a little difficult to obtain. You want to make sure that you follow the company on their Instagram page, which will then let you know when drops will happen, where batches will be available, and then you can find them on their site. Might be a little hard to obtain, but I think that if you're able to do so, then you'll be happy with your purchase. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.